Hey, Foot Clan, before we start today's show, I want to introduce you to a new sponsor. Well, new to you, not to me. Zycam Nasal All Clear. Listen, this keeps your nose clean, clear, and healthy as part of your daily routine, and it's different because it's easy to use and it's convenient for on the go. Look, we've all dealt with this, but Zycam. This nasal all clear, the swabs, they deliver the triple acting benefit of protecting, cleansing, and soothing your nasal passages. Al, we all need to soothe our nasal passages. This is a drug-free, non-saline-based moisturizing formula, and uh, I like to say I swab it out in the morning. Just swab it out. Just swab it out. Look, it literally allows you to swab it out. I wake up with the dryness due to congestion, and Zycam's nasal all clear just swabs it right out. Just swabs it out. And and like I said, easy to use, convenient for on the go. It's a drug-free, non-saline-based moisturizing formula. And you can swab it out with Zycam's Nasal All Clear. It's available on Amazon. Search for Zycam Nasal All Clear. That's A-L-L-C-L-E-A-R. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday, December 28th. 2020 coming to a close. Get out of my life, 2020. <laughs> you know where you can go? I don't know. There's a exclamation part point at the end of it, Mike. <laughs> it ended with the bang here. Monday, December 28th, the Fantasy Footballers. Jason Moore, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman Ride. I'm Andy Holloway. Welcoming you into a Monday episode. Week 16 nearly in the books, although we do have a very big game tonight. New England, Buffalo. A lot of championships on the line. A lot of championships already won. Uh, I've seen all the messages coming in on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Please do tag us and brag at us. Yes. We want to hear your stories. Yes. Hashtag Foot Clan title. Absolutely. So a uh, lot of uh, new winners, some some champs. I saw a champ, champ, champ. Oh, oh out yeah. There, uh, three in a row. Wow. Mm -hmm. so, Mike. Is kind of a champ, champ, champ. Three I am. in total for the league of record over time. Mike, you are now the only three-time winner. Took care of business this weekend in his championship game in league of record. Yes, Jason and and Mike and Mike and Mike. It's our, look, I uh, co-manage. I co-manage. Yeah, but there. it's mostly Jason. Jason won our dynasty junior league. That's right. <laughs> That's right, Dino Junior. I took you down, Kyle. Champ, 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 champin. Champing all over the place. There was much champ celebration in the office this morning. And then Andy. Andy in the other Dynasty League, <laughs> the other one. Uh, <laughs> uh, the one you that do? we're all in. Yes. yes. Just did, to be clear. How yeah. did you do? Uh, Tom Brady and I won, <laughs> won a championship together. <laughs> yes. Oh, Look, champ, I know this champ, show champ. is not just about us. But we have the microphones and we're all very happy about our championships right now. It does feel good. Oh, I may have danced good. a little bit in the office. Yes. And uh, sweated it out with A.J. Brown in the blizzard last night, wanting him to stay under 15 points so I could win. But uh, it was a wild weekend. I mean, we had ChristmasFootball.com. Mm -hmm. We had Friday uh, – or, sorry, Saturday, three games, and then Sunday. And so we were – all through the weekend, paying attention to these championship matches. I got a phone call at like 9.30 at night, last night, from my brother-in-law, who, which we're, we're great friends, but I don't talk to him that much on the phone. I'm like, uh, a 9.30 call. This, yeah, is, uh -oh. this is not good. I'm like, hey, dude, what's going on? He's like, dude, I just took <laughs> home my championship, <laughs> and then we had a big celebration on the phone. Well, oh, that's man. nice. It yeah. was awesome. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool to reflect and say like, look, we got here, we got through the fantasy football season. Yeah, unless you're a week seventeen championship league, in which case, shame on you. Slash, mm -hmm. we're here for you next week yeah. or this <laughs> week. 
<laughs> we are going to continue giving all the advice, getting you a hashtag Foot Clan title. And good news, Week 17ers. We aren't going to despise Week 17ers next year anymore. <laughs> and this is the opportunity to convince your league next year. If you're in a Week 17 league, that's right. We should stay a Week 17 league. Yeah. The NFL is going to expand their schedule. You'll have situations like this not happen. The Chiefs aren't going to play their players this week. Mm -hmm. But, but Andy. Oh, oh, voice of public opinion. But I just, I, I had a great year with my Mahomes Kelsey stack. Yeah, they, they're on the bench. But that's Enjoy not Enjoy Derek fair. Carr or something <laughs> for week 17. That's so stupid. I know, I know. Most people are not in that boat, though, and, and a lot of uh, leagues wrapping up. Tonight. By, by Derek Carr, you, of course, mean the quarterback eight so far on the week. Of course. That's all I ever mean. <laughs> Finishing higher than Patrick Mahomes. That's all I ever mean with Derek Carr. <laughs> no, this was this was fun. Uh, the Tom Brady uh, story all week long was very fun. I've never had a player pulled at halftime for right. playing too I, well. I can't remember it. Uh, I can't remember the halftime we're up so I much we can bench our starter. I couldn't believe it. Halftime, I'm riding high with Brady. I go into the kitchen to make myself a sandwich or something. I look across the the screen, and I see Gronk rumbling into the end zone in the third quarter. I go, Brady just threw a fifth. <laughs> a fifth and then it was Blaine Gabbert. Oh, the blonde bombshell. But I'm not going to complain. Yeah. Because Tom Brady uh, took it to 1,000. Uh, Mike and I are took it to un take it to 100s. Oh, baby matched each other and we've got one more week of that we'll talk about tomorrow oh, my too, Rashad so. Higgins was gonna be so good until <laughs> he didn't play football yeah no no wide receivers for the uh Browns that was that was fun a final little 2020 twist to yep. the weekend all right let's uh let's react to some of the events with some puns oh mm. well this one uh yeah oh brother Alwyn Camara. yes Yes, uh, ruining Christmases for many. Yes. <laughs> enhancing them for many as well. Then we'll go, mm, flop. Mm, oh, yeah, Chad flop. Hansen. Mm. Brandon, I puke. <laughs> Brandon, I yuck. <laughs> uh, Ty Reek. Hill. Oh, mm. uh, Le'Veon Smell. Hmm? Anybody? S Smiles Gaskin. Let's keep it simple. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. Uh, Derek the Matty. Mm, yeah, oh, come Merry Christmas, too, for Alvin. <laughs> oh, that's very good. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, Baker Mayday. <laughs> Can't even blame him. Uh, Mike Heavens. Oh, oh, oh what, yes, Mike Heavens. What indeed. do we have here? Russell Gag. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That'll do it for Monday, Pun Day. By the way, if you did win a Foot Clan title and want the new 2020 Foot Clan title shirt, you can get it at shopballers.com. There's a shirt and a hoodie, and uh, we've got lots of swag, a mug. A hoodie and some goodies. A hoodie and some, <laughs> some goodies. That's what they say. The footy awards are next week. Oh, my goodness. I need to get a, a suit. I think you will. I'm going to have good news for you in a little <laughs> bit. Um, <laughs> we always appreciate everybody... Uh, leaving reviews on Apple Podcasts. If if you had a fun year, if you enjoyed the show, uh, the show's not stopping. This is a year-round fantasy football podcast, but the schedule does change in the new year. After week seventeen, we are uh, new shows every Tuesday and Thursday, and uh, we have lots of exciting episodes coming up, reflecting on the year. This is kind of the time when you think. Uh, this is the time when when the third, fourth, fifth, sixth place people fade away. And mm -hmm. the winners hang around and reflect on the year and make sure they didn't miss any of the lessons towards the end of the season. Yeah, and, and if you want to be the first or second place you know, uh, player next year, this is the time to pay attention. We go through the, the truth series, which is always very, very important, where we look at, did this player really help your team? Tyler, Tyler Lockett. Lockett. <laughs> you know, I, I love Michael Keaton. Uh, you know, and, and we dive a little deeper than just their, where they finished and get an outlook on next season for these players. So a lot of great shows coming up after the, the regular season ends. Yeah, the annual fo uh, Fantasy Football Awards show, the footies coming out, where uh, we'll name a nickname of the year as well. And you can watch the show at youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Man, you know, like I've been trying to think through the nicknames, and there's been 
quite a few, some very good ones. And the Derrick Henry transforming into the Yeti. I figured that was just an absolute slam dunk lock. And hmm. then week 16 happened. I wonder if the pollsters, if the hmm. voters are going to take it out on him. They they have every right to if they want to. You're darn right. I mean, this is if you want to be petty, it's in the footies. <laughs> if you want to be petty, bury the Yeti. That's oh, what, no. Yeah. Man. Now, do you realize like, he almost hit 100 yards? Yeah, which I, I, did. I did not realize. What by a the loser. <laughs> He's pretty good at football. He is. All right, rewind time. Weekly Rewind. All right. The Browns had their wide receiver core removed uh, due to being placed on the COVID list ahead of week 17. Jarvis Landry, Richard Higgins, Donovan Peoples-Jones. Um, they didn't have them. Right. And it, it showed. It was one of those things when, when the first message came out with those three guys, I was like, oh, man, Hodge is going to be so good because he's flashed. And then uh, I saw another follow-up tweet. Oh, Hodge is also out. I was going deep, and then it was like, no, you, you're just they're they're all gone. And the experiment of if you just replace all your wide receivers with tight ends, can you beat the Jets? <laughs> <laughs> They've been wanting to <laughs> clinically test that for a while. Yeah, they, we we found out it didn't work. That's that's true. Yeah, that was that was disappointing. And apparently, this was being reported on Fox. I mean. The reason they all missed it is they were all in a hot tub with the linebacker that was positive with COVID. Mm. <laughs> so uh, this is why we don't get in uh, a hot tub with the producers. Yeah, that's right. I mean, come on. Philip Lindsay went to IR. We thought Melvin Gordon would smash. It was all there for him. He did not. No. Uh, Jared Goff suffered a broken right thumb in the second half against the Seahawks. Apparently, he can delay thumb surgery until after the season. The initial report that I saw was that he's not expected to play next week. It is a win and get in game for the Cardinals versus the Rams, though. So if he can play, I mean, to be fair, you can delay whatever surgery you want. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're like, uh, uh, hey, Mike, you know, your, your foot fell off. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get that next, sur next week. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking into it. Jason, How can you do, do you this as a quarterback? Your thumb's broken. And this is not to just put you out on a uh, an island here because I didn't know the answer until I looked it up. Do you know the backup quarterback for the Rams? I uh, I only know this because you posted it in Slack. Okay. And when I say I only know this, what I mean is I read it once and already forgot it. So, no, I do not. Give me the name again. I believe it's John Wolford. Exactly. <laughs> so, not that the Cardinals could stop C.J. Beathard. If, right. you this week. if you ask me in one hour... <laughs> <laughs> who the backup quarterback is for the Rams, I will not know. All right, Daryl Henderson, mm. who was expected to have a huge game, exited early with an ankle injury, might have scored on that drive. He got down oh, to the one. He for sure was going to score. And then was out. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Matthew Stafford. Oh, this was this, brutal. Oh, this was brutal. Matthew Staff Stafford had an ankle sprain. You know he tries to play through everything. This was a bad sprain. And early in the game. Early in the game. Second or third play. It destroyed Marvin Jones' game. It destroyed the chance for this to be a real shootout, mm -hmm. which it was it had the potential to be with Matthew Stafford. One of the teams kept their part of the bargain. Yeah, and then uh, Brady got pulled at halftime. For whatever reason, they kept Mike Evans in there to disintegrate the secondary's morale, <laughs> which he accomplished uh, in spades. Thank you. Deshaun Watson will get scans and scopes. <laughs> what? On his throwing arm. Oh, no. Scans and scopes? That doesn't sound good. Brooks, how many of each? Uh, maybe a couple. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't sound Not good at all. Scans and scopes. I mean, it, so in the game. It's like a he, Dr. Seuss book. It, it does. Uh, if, if you didn't see the play, Watson was uh, had the arm cocked back to throw, and then it just got essentially trapped. Freak, as, freak accident. As he's doing the throwing motion. It looked like it hurt a lot. Under a defender's uh, face mask, yeah. his fingers. But got he came caught. back. He did for the last play of the game. That, but uh, adrenaline's yeah. crazy. Yep. And then now he needs scans and scopes. All right, this news should not get buried. Um, <laughs> yeah, bro. studs and stinkers, scans and scopes on today's show. <laughs> uh, Adam Gaze said running back Frank Gore suffered a chest injury. He left the field early. The Jets. Look, there are a few things that we need. Or, or, or we like this show to be about. 
accuracy. Yes. Projections, right? We do analysis. We try to give you the best odds to win. Want to get those hashtag Foot Clan it's titles. Not, it's not perfect. I mean, you're projecting the future, but we we hang our hat on being accurate consistently for you. But a real key to the show over the last few years has been the presence of Adam Gaze, who has now won mm. two consecutive games. Wow, that's on brand. And Number two. Is there a chance? Is there a chance no. that we get that content again for I don't next think season? So as good as buttholes are for the show, <laughs> oh, I, my goodness. I don't think he's going to be retained next year because that franchise doesn't want to continue winning two games a season they are now locked into the number two are they uh, yes, yes they are locked into the number two pick the jacksonville jaguars are locked number two yes, are locked into the number one pick i don't know i mean he's been there this so long it would be great don't he, get me wrong i am rooting for him to retain his job all the jets fans just left the show <laughs> All right, uh, one update for tonight's game. Damian Harris is still listed as questionable. I think he's going to play tonight. I'm not sure anybody's counting on him or should be, but you could have been in my situation in the league I won. I had to decide between Edo Smith and Frank Gore. Mm, Didn't really have any regrets on that decision because they both scored like five points. So That's the best part of those guys is you you, you, uh, you him and you haw. You yes. toil over it all week. Like, who's it going to be? I need to get that decimal edge yes <laughs> because they're gonna score the same yeah it, it's it's one of those things where uh, i was fine yeah at the end of the day when you're deciding between ito smith and frank or you it don't matter yeah you've already lost and yet you won i Andy. know i know congratulations it feels great to be a champ <laughs> hey with the footies coming up and mike you said you need a suit i do look there's no bad time to look good we want to thank indochino who makes incredible awesome custom tailored made suits and look it's always a good time to look good when indochino's offering made to measure custom clothing at a more affordable price if you're going and buying a suit off a rack stop it stop you look ridiculous because <laughs> they don't fit right the shoulders the arms all of those things you can get a made to measure custom suit and the process is awesome i mean that genuinely this is a personal endorsement from myself that going down and getting measured by someone very easily you can go online find your local spot for indochino uh, and and go down get measured get tailored it doesn't take long and you feel like a king you're like look i got a big booty I'm just going to say it how it is. Well, like, I've been trying to keep that under wraps. <laughs> the junk is in the, the trunk. The junk is in the trunk. And the fabric doesn't always fall right in all of the places. Due to the booty. Due to the booty. <laughs> but I'm telling you, if you want the fabric to fall right every ounce of your body, you can get a custom made-to-measure suit. You can get uh, casual uh, pants. Yeah, you chinos. Can, I, yeah, I picked up some chinos. You can get some chinos. The best part, Indochino suits start at two ninety nine with all the customizations. Book a virtual appointment and shop online at Indochino.com and right now you can get $30 off any purchase of three ninety nine dollars or more when you enter the code FOOTBALLERS at checkout. That's $30 off a purchase of three ninety nine dollars or more at Indochino.com promo code FOOTBALLERS. Alright, and if just in case you want to get that booty under control. We've got HelloFresh to talk about here today. Fresh, pre-measured ingredients, mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. And this is kind of that benchmark part every year where you want to be eating healthier. You want to get things right. You want to get them tight. You want to get things figured out. And I don't want to go to the grocery store. So all of those things no, work, that place sucks. Work, to <laughs> work together. You can save time. And you actually save money with HelloFresh. It's not only 46%. 46% cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store. But you get to skip all those errands. You get to skip all of that toil. And you get to, uh, you know, cook up some food in the comfort of your pajamas if you want to. Uh, you can hit refresh this year with HelloFresh. Whether you're looking to eat better, cook more, save money, it is a one-box autopilot solution to all those New Year's resolutions. I love it. We had a couple of HelloFresh me meals this past week. They are delicious. My family loves it. The whole family eats the same food together. It's great. You can go to HelloFresh.com slash 10footballers or use the code 10footballers for 10 free meals. See how those tie together? I see. Uh, and you get free shipping. It's 
HelloFresh.com slash 10footballers and use the code 10footballers for 10 free meals. Uh, it is uh, a wonderful option. Number one meal kit in America. Now, before we move on to the studs and stinkers, there was a little note in here from our, our you know, web developer, mm. Andy Schneider. Mm-hmm. He's asking, is there a Foot Clan bridesmaid hashtag? Oh, yeah. Mm. Now, I, I bring it up because here's the truth. Some of you won championships, and some of you didn't. I'd and, say about half. And uh, it takes a lot of skill to get to the fantasy playoffs, but it does take a little bit of luck mm-hmm. to end up with that championship because it's you match up with the wrong person on the wrong week, I saw a lot of people with Alvin Kamara who got knocked out in the semifinal week mm. and scored approximately 10,000 points in their would have yeah. been championship game. And I know some of you got Kamara for Christmas, and I'm, I'm sorry, but I saw way more Kamara in semis than I did see Kamara in championship games. Absolutely. So uh, that's part of the process. You know, this was Mike had, uh, he took on the League of Records championship. And we'd been pushing for years, but it had been a little while since it you grabbed had. the league of record title, and that's just the way it goes. Getting to the playoffs, that's that's more under your control. So uh, congrats to those who won, and congrats to the bridesmaids. Still a, a, a fabulous year and a lot of fun. Let's uh, Let's talk studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Thomas Brady. <laughs> Tom <laughs> Brady. 22 for 27, 348 and 4. And a half. Yeah, Detroit stinks. They really do. <laughs> but this was great. Ooh. This was I mean, I put I put a lot on that Tom Brady lock on the week, and it was great to see him come through. Um not all of your plan look, there's a lot of planning that goes into the playoffs. We do a lot of recommending you know, you, you preloaded defense, right? You, mm-hmm. you see who's got the better matchup. I preloaded Tom Brady at the trade deadline. You and I both did because we had Josh Allen. Yeah. We both traded for Tom Brady for these playoffs because of the matchups. Yeah, for this week specifically. I and wanted to be in the in the championship <laughs> with Josh Allen and Tom Brady. That's the hard part. Is you got to get there to like have that plan work out, but it was neat to see Brady have the big week. It makes you wonder, I think, seeing how many – 40-point weeks he's had this year, which is, I think, at least four of them, where he's been a top you know, quarterback. He was the number one quarterback twice this year, two, three, five on a week. I wonder what he has left in the tank for next year because you imagine he's coming back. Oh, for sure. And he's got those weapons, although not all under contract. Is that right? I mean, Chris Godwin's not under contract. That is correct. So it'll be interesting to see. Other um, big-time performances at the quarterback position Deshaun Watson had a nice game three touchdowns 324 Ben Roethlisberger remembered how to throw the football against Indianapolis and ended up with 342 and three he had been asleep he had been slumbering yes. for a while and he awoke honestly the I mean you had Tom Brady and Deshaun Watson at the top but if you're looking through the top 10 it was a streamer's delight this week with, with Roethlisberger Cousins Trubisky Brandon Allen, I mean, well, like, nobody's streaming. Brandon I know, I know, Allen. but I'm saying that the the top ten was was comprised mostly of players who you had to take a chance on, and it wasn't the the big guys. And it, and you probably didn't take a chance on any of them. So. Well, Trubisky, Kirk Cousins, yeah, yeah, you that's true. There and then a uh, Brady, Watson, and Aaron Rodgers came yeah. through. Those were the championship winning group of quarterbacks. Uh, at the running back position, uh, that Alvin Kamara guy, I guess oh he, my goodness he deserves a drop today, right? Yeah, yes. He was full Super Camario. And <laughs> Sean Payton with the Taysom Hill. I mean, come on, man. It wasn't just it wasn't just that Taysom Hill touchdown. Because there was also the drive where it ended in a field goal after Kamara basically dropped uh a pass that would have been another touchdown. He so he legit could have had eight. I'm just and, specifically like your player is going for the record, man. It's it's rare. I think they said that the record, this record, the six rushing touchdowns was set in like the twenties or something. Nineteen, I think. I mean, let let a the game is in hand. Let your player go for a record. Yeah. Uh, 
If you withstood Super Camario, like you won against him, please let us know on yeah. Twitter at DFF Ballers. I want to see that box score. It probably included a player like Miles Gaskin. Oh, the gas man. 14 for 87 on the ground, two touchdowns through the air, and 82 yards receiving. Start of the week. Uh, has <laughs> Buffalo next week, but it's not rocket science to play the starting running back from the Miami Dolphins. Not anymore. Man. What a world. <clears throat> can I throw Ryan Fitzpatrick into the studs? Oh, yes. 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 Yes, yes, yes I, we I can. Mean, to not talk about the play of the century is to do this show a disservice. Man, do I love that man. And I have never seen one game that is more boring and more exciting <laughs> in the same game. And I don't know what happened to change the game from the most awful football I've ever had to endure watching to a must-watch TJIF type of programming. <laughs> because when There's a J in there? <laughs> <laughs> TGIF, uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, but I'm telling you, when Fitzpatrick came in, it, it just became the most exciting game of all time. And every time that the other team would score, I'd be like, awesome, because now my man Fitzpatrick gets to show you some magic. But I had no idea that he was so magical that he could have his head turned backwards on his body mid-throw with a gross face mask and deliver a 40-yard strike exactly where the ball needed to go. The parallels between the Dolphins and Cardinals years where a left-handed short yardage Matt Leinert was court, the starting quarterback mm -hmm. and the aged Kurt Warner would be this fourth quarter. Eventually they bring him in to go on a run are incredible. And the truth is the Dolphins could win a Super Bowl with Ryan Fitzpatrick. I believe that. Not that they will, but they could because they have a great defense, a good running game, but you have to have the ability, the capability to go out and compete with a Chiefs scoring offense or a Ravens or anybody. Yeah, You're I mean, not going to win a Super Bowl with Tua right now. If you bring in Fitzpatrick when you're already down 18 against the Chiefs, it's too late sometimes. Yeah, he otherwise he'll have to do a – no look, face mask, <laughs> Hail Mary, 15-yard penalty, saving you, and it's not going to work in the playoffs. So, Thank you for bringing up Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, he deserved it mm -hmm. because he's not going to show up in the fantasy stats, but that was a fantasy finish. All right, Samaj P. Ryan went yeah. 13 for 95-2 and two yes, while did. Gio had 131 total yards his, himself. Yeah, running on the Houston Texans is easy. Well, <laughs> in fairness, throwing on the Houston Texans, also, also easy. Yeah, also easy. David Johnson. Oh, can, can we get oh. it? David Johnson. Uh -huh. <laughs> 12 for 128 and 1. He earned that musical interlude. I mean, we were talking about how he wasn't running the ball. He's just being used as a receiver. He said, wait and see. 128 on the ground. He's been outstanding this he year. He looked good. He did. He looked physically good. And... He's still under contract. I think you know he's he's a player next year. Will be uh, it's a, insane. A was that the J? Option. Thank Johnson. It's Friday. That's right. That's okay. what I was saying. He, I mean, it, he the he busted the week he got hurt in week nine against Jacksonville. That's fine. But other than that, one bad game the yep. entire year. Week two against Baltimore was bad, and so you thought it, it's, it's crazy. It's that early on, yeah. you know, when it happens early, you just. You project that out, but he was basically a top 24 running back almost every single week that he played this season. Yeah, yeah, and um, it'll be interesting if they if they keep Will Fuller there. I mean, they have the quarterback, but he has dealt with injury year after year after year. Yes. So uh, that is that is the only kind of tough part with him. Uh, A.J. Dillon. A.J. Dillon, do we still oh. have that drop? Uh, I hope of we do. Of course we do. Oh, <laughs> and it was chilly out. 21 it was. for 124 and 2. Look, the, the baby Yeti. Showed, Talk to me about the, the future for A.J. Dillon. The, the, the future for A.J. Dillon should be the, – the range of outcomes, it, it's still pretty wide because Aaron Jones, if you don't know the situation, Aaron Jones is a free agent. Jamal Williams is a free agent. 
There's a reason the Green Bay Packers spent a second round pick on AJ Dillon when they were not running back needy this year and they they were a team set up to make a Super Bowl run that could have used a second round pick on someone on the defense uh, another uh, alignment just anything besides a running back wide receiver a, a wide receiver although uh, Devontae Adams is just, yeah, they might not need they don't another need one it. uh but if if Aaron Jones does leave and they don't re-sign him then the future is incredible Incredibly bright for AJ. That Dillon. decision is brutal because Aaron Jones is he's, yes a difference maker, next level elite difference maker like a Dalvin Cook, but he's going to be expensive, very, and so that's a really difficult decision. Yeah, I mean, if I was the you know usually when you're playing GM, it's it's you know, and I feel like it's easy because we're not in it. We don't have the pressure of fans. We're not right. really. But in this and decision. And we don't know them. We don't know them as people. Right. In this decision, I, I don't know what the right answer is. I, I do. I think it sh if I had to come to my conclusion, since you know yours, I would let Aaron Jones walk and not pay top dollar for a running back when my running back position will be fine. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is running backs get hurt all the time. So that's not my solution. My solution is to franchise tag Aaron Jones. Mm. Okay. Just okay. One, one more year. Run it back. You're going to go 13 and three again. I mean, two straight 13 and three years with Aaron Jones and Aaron Rodgers. I would try to run it back like that. Dylan's your depth piece. Let Jamal walk. That's what I would do. Never forget that Derrick Henry, he felt like a, a bust or yes. irrelevant because he was drafted to a team that had DeMarco Murray. And he spent years just not playing football, really, like A.J. Dillon has started out his career. Yeah, I think the real difference between them, I mean, obviously on the ground, Jones is better too, but. It's that passing game work, the the flexibility he gives Aaron Rodgers in the passing game. Jeff Wilson, twenty two oh, for one eighty three. My name is Jeff. Um, wow, that's the most yards in four years by a single running back on the Forty ers in a game. The Shanahan system is incredible, and they just keep finding these running backs that nobody else wanted. It's funny considering fantastic. having to pay Aaron Jones and having that conversation, and then here's. Yeah. Jeff Wilson after Raheem Mostert after Tevin Coleman after after they tried to pay a guy yeah <laughs> they, tried, they, they tried to, to have a high priced running back and then he got hurt two years in a row yeah that's the that's the brutal part yeah um Jonathan Taylor another two touchdowns ended the year RB 13 3 2 15 and 7 18 for 72 uh 74 and 2 he will be an extremely interesting offseason draft how high does he yeah, go? He'll yes. be top 10. Yeah. Yeah. The potential. Uh, J.D. McKissick, oh. the touchdown that could have won people championships. J.D. Mm. McKissick was mm. – yeah, we're ready yeah. for it. Yeah. Can't, yeah. Didn't catch me that yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> nice try. sleeping, boo. Uh, he was not having a good game, and then he was. A deep bomb touchdown for a running back will do that. He – smooched for your fantasy team. <laughs> David Montgomery ended the year incredibly. Seven. RB7, RB1, RB7, RB1, RB9. And he got pulled at the end. Yeah, for like a large part of that game against yes. Jacksonville. Went 23 for 95 and one. Two more targets. Good for you, Montgomery. Yeah. I, it's great. The way he ended this year, I'm really curious where he goes next year as well. Yep. I mean, we're going to be into those discussions soon enough, and... It will be fascinating to see where the recency bias goes and how good he's been. I mean, the, and do they bring back Mitch Trubisky? The last five weeks of the season, he was the running back too. He was more valuable than Dalvin Cook, more valuable than Derrick Henry or Aaron Jones or Nick Chubb. The only player who outscored him in the last five weeks was Alvin Kamara. I remember being devastated in our because our main league, you put three players into a lottery at, to keep, and only two remain on your team and one randomly goes back into the draft. It's the way we do our keeper system. I remember being devastated when I got stuck with David Montgomery <laughs> instead of Joe Mixon. Oh, how funny. So, yeah. When you think about vetoing trades, everyone, remember the story of Joe Mixon and David Montgomery. All right, wide receivers. Devontae Adams is unstoppable. If you try to press cover him, you've lost. If you try to off cover him, they just screen him the ball. It's they do everything that we tell people to do when you're like, well, just throw it to him every play if he's really good. Oh, okay, we will. Oh, you're not going to play him up on the line? Just throw him the ball instantly and let him run. 
okay, yeah, I'll do that too. He's so good. Actually, that's kind of not true in the sense that I remember a play or early in the, the, the first half, they drive down and Aaron Rodgers, they're about the 10, 12, 15 yard line or so, and he throws it over the head of Robert Tunyon in the end zone. Do you remember that play? I I have Devontae Adams, and Devontae Adams was wide open. Just, you know, <laughs> had he targeted him every single play, they would have had one more touchdown. He is he is unreal. I, I feel like his target share, which is astronomically high, needs to be doubled. Mike Evans, 12 targets, 10 for 181 and 2. Quietly the wide receiver 9 on the year now. And was actually has actually been super consistent once they brought A B in. Do you see the stat in the doc on Devontae Adams? Uh from from Kyle the Borgogan. Yes. If you took away all one hundred and nine of his receptions, so you're taking away all the PPR, all the PPR scoring, points. Yeah, I didn't you, read it because I didn't understand it. You take away all the PPR points, a hundred and nine receptions, take them all away. So, he would drop from the wide receiver one to the wide receiver two that's unreal and this is a player that's missed he missed two games due to injury right basically three wow all right mike evans has been great antonio brown has opened things up for him and brady's kind of figured some things out michael gallup went six for 121 and two andy dalton had a game i mean cooper had a good game cd lamb had, had a, a great good game, game. Uh, CD Lamb had a great game, and uh, this is actually over the last month. Gallup is Gallup's been pretty good, which is weird because he was so <laughs> he was so bad. I mean, coming into the season, Gallup was one of my favorite draft season picks. He was a late round guy that I felt like was being disrespected because he's talented. But over the last month, Michael Gallup finished the season really, really strong. You imagine playing Michael Gallup. Over Tyler Lockett all these past like six, seven, eight oh, weeks. Oh, you'd be I mean, dominating. Been... He, he's the wide receiver 10 over the last month. Jamison Crowder had a huge game for the Jets. Threw a touchdown pass. Seven for 92 on the ground. Or I'm sorry, through the air. Uh, Nelson Aguilar again. Five for 155 and one. Brandon Cooks. Okay. Yeah, I'll take it. Brandon Cooks was 10 targets. Seven for 144 and one. Brandon Cooks, uh, really the only wide receiver that did anything in that game. Mm -hmm. Kiki QT and, and Mbop did nothing. Mbop. Mm. Mm, mm, flop. Mm, bad. <laughs> um, Juju, 13 targets, 9 for 96 and a touchdown. Despite not being out there or seemingly not producing in the first half, it was a big second half for Juju. Got to, He just had to stop dancing on them logos. Yeah, I mean, it's probably for the best. Yeah. Uh, you it's, it's, you find that funny? Yeah, I just, I I find that that somehow that story yes. was like headline news. Uh, you turn on ESPN, they're talking about Juju has said he will stop dancing on logos. Like he's dancing on the logo. So what? <laughs> that's, I, that's not changing how he performs on the field when he's when he goes up for a, a reception. He's not like. Man, I, I danced on that star, and then he drops the ball. What's funny to me was how it was before that. The reason it's headline news is because this was used as such locker room material, and the players would be pissed off. He's dancing on our logo. <laughs> it's like, re you they really care that much? <laughs> like it's, I, I was just always surprised that it's like it's that big a deal. Like, okay. It He's also didn't matter when they were 11-0. and 0. It was the, the logo... The logo dancing wasn't getting those teams fired up. Yeah, he was dropping passes before, after, and during all of those. And he will continue yeah. to drop passes. Yeah, now now it was just a matter of the team was getting asked so many questions about it, he just stopped so that the questions would stop. Adam Probably. Thielen had a nice week. T. Higgins, Brandon Allen difference. Yeah. T. Higgins and C.D. Lamb, I can tell you right now, those are those are like my <laughs> – those are two guys that in 2021 I will be drafting everywhere. Well, the rookie wide receivers, they have so much potential. Absolutely. But the, some of them, like Justin Jefferson, will already be a, a locked and loaded top pick. Sure. Yeah, he But will. if you're looking for the Calvin Ridley, the guy that's going to break out and take over the clear-cut number two or number one role for the team, I, I, those Higgins are the two great. guys, Higgins and, and CeeDee Lamb, that I'm, I'm looking towards. I'm just – I was going to move on to tight ends, but I'm, I'm remembering – 
in our dynasty league that you traded Julio Jones to acquire CD Lamb, two first round picks, and Hollywood Brown. Well, it, I think that one was a second round pick. Um, Hollywood Brown was in my trading Todd Gurley for David Johnson in a first and Hollywood. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> Thank you. Really glad I took that down because you've rebuilt your team. Jimmy Grandpa, four for 69 and two at the tight end position. Jimmy Graham. He's still good at doing that. He really is. He's great at scoring touchdowns. He's great. Especially you, when they're you, wide open. Well, those, but even the all the com contested catches he makes, you can line him up one-on-one, -on -one and he ca he seems to catch it almost every time, which is something Austin Hooper can't do. Right. Oh, my goodness. Catch the ball, Hooper. He's, Hooper still had a good game. He like for, for a tight end, Hooper was very good, especially if you're in a PPR league. But he should have had a monster, a monster yes, game. He, he dropped a touchdown. He dropped like three other. He, he should be the number one tight end on the week with 150 yards and a touchdown. And instead, he was like, "Okay, that's a solid game." Yeah, I, Jimmy Graham genuinely adds a benefit to a team, which is something that you know he's not the old Jimmy Graham running seam routes and breaking huge plays, but he's still this level of Gronk, who also had two touchdowns uh, this past week and was huge for your fantasy team. So, stinker time. Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. All right, this will be a uh, more difficult segment for a lot of people. So mm -hmm. Maybe cathartic, though. You, you need to work through. You need to hear uh, the players that let you down. Do you? Well, you need to hear don't them you shame, if, shame you don't a little bit. Oh, if we shame them? Right. I mean, that's, they're, they're literally in the Stinkers of the Week. Right. Just so, bringing them up is shaming them. Drew Brees, Teddy Bridgewater, Tua. Tongue of Iloa. Drew Brees is not his fault. It's Alvin Kamara's fault. Yeah, <laughs> 311 yards for Drew Brees. It's just all the touchdowns. I mean, if you played Drew Brees, I feel so bad for you. Yeah. Because you hate, like. It, it reminds is, me of the golf game against Seattle. So I was just going to bring up when he was your start of the week and you watched the game. It's like, oh, he's excellent. He's playing well. He's playing great. It's just the fantasy points are all going to the running back position. Um, that stinks. You know who didn't play well? and hasn't been Teddy Bridgewater. I mean, yeah. he's just he started the year looking like he was a solid option for a solid team and I don't believe it anymore. He he is he's not he's flat out not good enough to go where the Panthers want to go. And I'm not move, talking Move him in dynasty if you can this offseason before something hits the fan. Absolutely. If you're in a two quarterback league, move him. Would you do that with Tua? What's yeah. What's the future Tua, for Tua? The future is not Tua. The future I mean, I, I will just be so – they have I mean, the number players four. players have to develop, right? It, absolutely. He needs to develop, but he's being utilized in a way that I don't know is going to develop him, and the reality is they have the number four pick. Now, I'm not saying they're going to draft another quarterback because that would be – that would kind of be resetting the clock, and I don't know that at the number four pick there's a quarterback that's that much better than what you've gotten to a – but I, I just, I have a hard time personally believing he is the. the he answer. went a pick ahead of Herbert, right? That yeah. is correct. Yikes! Swing and a miss. Yikes! All right, Dwayne Haskins stinks. He finished <laughs> as the quarterback thirty-six on the week. In a week, he started. <laughs> he, yeah, twenty-eight pass attempts. That's plenty. Oh, uh, and I don't know if we'll ever see him start a game. The rest of his life. Yes, you do. He you, won't. You know he won't. No, he won't. I don't know. He walked out of the facility. The team was trying to get a hold of him. That one was a little bit mis uh, was it misinformed. Yeah, they, they there was a kind of blow up that he didn't go to the mandatory um, r reporter. You know the post game the presser. post game press conference. He was actually told um the no no <laughs> okay. Okay. He, he was told oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah uh oh. get out of here uh no if you he was, leave now you'll he beat told the traffic that heineke's gonna do that <laughs> he, he was told that heineke's gonna do the pr post game uh, presser and yeah, then he okay. made himself available after it started coming out that like oh, oh he didn't show up okay yeah he's never playing again no he's not no. uh these were some disappointing weeks from players that you probably had in your lineup. Justin Herbert yeah. just had one touchdown pass against Denver. Um, it was really not nothing driving down the field either. It was a screen pass that, that Eckler found his way into the end zone. 
that was disappointing. QB 17 finish for him. Ryan Tannehill, QB 18 finish for him. Thankfully with him, there was the snowball. And I, cause he was someone, you know, I had been looking at and it, it was an easy pivot off of him. I don't know if it was easy for many people. Well, a couple, I'm, I'm saying that I, I think that there were other options. Like for instance, perfect example. I was looking at uh, Ryan Tannehill and Mitchell Trubisky. And it was like, I would have gone Tannehill beforehand, but as soon as the weather started looking bad towards the end of the week, I, I would have switched to, to Trubisky. How can Rodgers play in that? It's 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 an it unfair no advantage sense. because he's like, so good at it and other people aren't, and it looks like they're going to have everything come through Lambeau. Yeah, and it, it helps that he just stands back there. I mean, the offensive line is so underrated for so many of these teams. Part of what is a struggle for Arizona and Kyler Murray is that there's no time to sit back there and pick apart a defense. And Roger sits back there and he's doing like, I don't know. Calisthenics. Or long division. I mean, he, he's got time. <laughs> Makes a huge difference. And then he's uh, – because he's got players that will get open after time, it, you know, goes by. Yeah, Kyler. Kyler had a bad week, 31 yeah. for 50, 247, no passing touchdown, 75 rushing, but didn't – Huge disappointment. Huge disappointment. I mean, uh, we we overcame. We had Kyler as our quarterback in the in the Dino Junior League. We overcame it, but it, he, he had 16 points. And, it, I mean, really, really disappointing. This next week against the Rams, if you, if you overcame and you're in the championship, I don't want to rely on Kyler. The difference between Cliff Kingsbury and some of the better play callers in football is so such a wide gap that I just don't know what hope there is for Cliff to reach that level. He gets destroyed by Sean McVay every time they play each other. He's nothing on the – like, I wish Eric Bieniemy. I wish that was yeah. the new Cardinals head coach next year. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, th I think he's going to be a great coach. He is. They Even Mike Kafka. They're going to lose two assistants in Kansas City this year. Mm -hmm. And I don't blame the teams that go and get those players. No, it, Andy Reid's coaching tree is, is great. You just don't see any of the ingenuity – in Arizona, and I think a lot of it is masked by the athleticism of Kyler Murray, where he can take a play that is a horrible play call and then it turned it into a 46-yard run. Anyways, that's a little hometown frustration yeah. out here. They Bro can make the playoffs next week <laughs> by beating the Rams. Beat the Rams. And Sean McVay. They don't do. No. All right, running backs, there's a couple of Grinches in here. Mr. Grinch. Wow, both of them Grinched out. Yep. Josh As Jacobs. did Russell at quarterback. All three Grinches were, were bad. Was yours Russell? Yeah, I thought I think, yours was Lamar Jackson. No, mine was Russell Wilson. I thought it was Lamar. It was definitely no, Lamar Jackson. It was definitely, without a doubt, Russell Wilson. You, but Russell you, you Wilson were, or Andy Dalton. You remember on. the whole game? I will bet you anything no, 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 you no, no, want. No, 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 okay, no. I want $1,000 bet. <laughs> it was, that, he said he would bet anything he, he, he wants. Who, 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 who was the Lamar Jackson one? He was considering Lamar Jackson. I said I was considering oh. Lamar Jackson. Oh. Yes. But you didn't make it, but Lamar. I, no, no. But we played a whole game called yeah. Russell Wilson right. or Andy yeah. Dalton. Yeah, that's right. I accept $1,000. <laughs> you made a bet with yourself. I didn't make the bet. Also, uh, had you played Andy Dalton over Russell Wilson, you'd be feeling pretty good. Yeah. Josh Jacobs was one of the Grinches. 13 for 69, no touchdowns, no receptions. Mike Davis was another Grinch. No targets in the game. 14 for 28 on the ground. Did have a touchdown. That wasn't enough to make him uh, a success for your fantasy team this week. And they used a lot of Rodney Smith in that game. They used a lot of uh, Curtis Samuel Yes, as they well. did. Uh, Melvin Gordon, Lev Bell, Wayne Gallman, DeAndre Swift, also mm. in the stinkers at running back this week. Swift, everybody on that offense that had a chance was destroyed by the $38 million man, Chase Daniel. Who is the worst player in NFL history? So bad. I mean, he looked. It, you, you're 100 percent right. I mean, nobody on this list gets a free pass outside of DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift, it was not his fault at all. You can't do anything with Chase Daniel uh, thrust into the lineup unexpectedly and not able to move the ball at all. Daryl yeah. Williams out carried Love Bell. That that exactly. That's where I was going to go with this question. Week 17 looked better. Kansas City is going to bench. They're starters. Does that mean that Le'Veon Bell is going to be playing Week 17, <laughs> yes, or does, does that mean that Daryl Williams is going to be playing Week Probably 17? Probably means Darwin Thompson is going to be playing Week 17. I'll bet it means Daryl Williams will play. Um, but Daryl Williams, if if they weren't benching them, he would be the player I would easily start over Le'Veon Bell. 
for next week you're saying? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't I don't know if we're going to see a lot of either one. We'll have to get a read on the week. Williams seems important to this offense with Clyde potentially missing the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Wayne Gallman's time has ended in a big way. Yeah. Wide receiver. He's out of money. Bruce <laughs> Wayne has gone broke. Wide receivers uh, that had disappointing weeks. Mm. Tyreek Hill, six targets, four for 65. They had him going early, and then that fell apart. So uh, hamstring injury coming into the game made me lower him in my rankings because, uh, you know, by all intents and purposes, going against Atlanta was a good thing. But – Little concern there. DeAndre Hopkins, 12 targets, 8 for 48. The targets were there. Uh, Kyler wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was a blizzard. (laughs) Now, A.J. Brown had eight targets, 4 for 43. Corey Davis was a full-fledged Goosesaurus. I mean, this was... (laughs) This feels (laughs) like you spent time earning our trust back the potential back and then Corey Davis was gone. I don't I don't again, I don't, either. I don't blame him. Um Tannehill was not good. Yeah, Tannehill was not he's you know, he spent his, his, the majority of his career in, you know, Miami and now he's playing in a blizzard. Very difficult to have a good fantasy game through the air. Um I think people will blame him because he turned himself into a must. That's fine. I will take the value. DK Met- next year? Yeah. Really? Corey Davis? Yeah. Corey Davis. He's a good draft he's pick He's a next good year. player. DK Metcalf, eight targets, six for 59. Tyler Lockett, three for 44. He's the wide receiver, 41, over the back half of the year. Yikes. Tyler Lockett uh, is doing his best first half of the year Hollywood Brown impression, basically. They're like almost inverse yeah. situations. Together, they were one good <laughs> player. I mean, this isn't like he's okay. This no, is like I'm looking at these games and I'm seeing 58, 64, 73, 47, 47, 66, 59. Yeah, he's someone like that invisibility. I think over the last few weeks we have, you know, talked about moving on from not having to start him every week because, of, you know, you got to stay water. I guess I'm more thinking water. future. Oh, yeah, certainly future. I mean, we look, over the, over the back half of the year, Russ – was not the same he wasn't good we talked about it in the deep ball accuracy and and all of that jazz but I mean think about how dominant DK Metcalf has been unlike Lockett and over the last eight weeks DK Metcalf is not a wide receiver one he's the wide receiver 17 yeah oh since week 10 Tyler Lockett has averaged 8.3 points in a half point PPR scoring format and DK Metcalf 11.4 right they both have been and Russ has been outside the top 12 in five of the last seven games, and then the two that he snuck inside of was eight and 12. So no big games from Russell Wilson since week eight at all. They stopped letting him cook. He's not even reheating in a microwave right now. No, they took away all utensils, no forks, he's no not, knives. He's doing nothing. That's right. He's got a cork on his fork <laughs> to protect his <laughs> eyes. Oh, <God. laughs> Definitely week seventeen. What the heck does what the heck does that mean? Anybody? It's a it's what? an old school dirty rotten scoundrels joke. Oh, someone out there got it. Oh, uh, okay. Oh uh, no, I you respect. It. I like the rhyming. <laughs> I respect a deep reference. That's that's made specifically for five people. That's right. Those are my favorite. They will love it. <laughs> Robert Woods, DJ Moore, Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk was destroyed by Kittle's return. Yes, he was. But that's that's unfortunate because he was dominating over the last half of the year and did nothing. Two targets. Whew. Yeah, I mean, Kittle led the team with uh, around 95 yards. Nobody else had more than uh, 20-something. T.Y. Hilton. Three for 60, seven targets, mm-hmm. not a great game. No. QT, Hanson, mm, bad. Mm. Robert Tunyon was a huge disappointment. Yes. Had, the, had the end zone target, but was one for 17. That is uh, unfortunate. Yeah, as well as Hawkinson, we, we kind of, we've we brought it up over and over. He had a Chase Daniel problem, but obviously going into the game, you were relying on Hawkinson, and he was in your starting lineup, and <laughs> Tyler Higby and Dallas Goddard also disappointing weeks. Yeah. Three catches each, no touchdowns. So unfortunate end for some tight ends there. Stinkers of the week presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. Um, put a 
cork on the fork. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To rough. protect your eyes. Protect That's your right. Eyes. Uh, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the podcast. All autographed items from Pristine Auction, authenticated by the very best, the top authentication companies in the industry. They guarantee authenticity. So if you wonder about autograph memorabilia, you don't have to. They guarantee it. Miles Gaskin signed mini helmet, seventy dollars and twenty cents oh, yesterday. Respect for the gas man. Yeah. It, nice. He, Miles Gaskin, James Robinson. These are players I'm very interested in their 2021 um, situations because they had really impressive years out of nowhere. Uh, PristineAuction.com, use the code BALLERS. BALLERS. The best place on earth for Mm -hmm. sports memorabilia. And uh, might have to swag out after your championship. Absolutely. Reward some players for big performances. Tom Brady, kind of give him some... Devontae Adams. Little Tom Brady jersey, Buccaneers jersey. That'd be fun. Anything else we got to talk about, gentlemen? Are we done? We are done. Good luck to everyone going tonight. We get it. There's still a game that has implications. Cole Beasley, Josh Allen. We can still Stephon lose Diggs. if Stephon Diggs scores 75 <laughs> points. <laughs> Good luck tonight, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.